911, what is your emergency? A man collapsed on the street downtown. Help is on the way. I'll bet it's another addict. Why would you do that to yourself? What a waste of time. You'll never get clean. Look, his medical bracelet says he has diabetes. Let's get him to the hospital so they can regulate his blood sugar levels. He needs to learn to balance his diet and insulin so this doesn't happen again. <laughs> well, at least he's not some junkie who'll just end up passed out on the street again later this week. If I told them, they would never look at me the same way. I'm too ashamed to ever let them know. I just need a break to get all of this out of my head. I can't take it anymore. I'm scared to use these. Who knows what's in them? It's not like I can talk to anyone about it. A good life? I just need to survive today. How did I get here? Opioids are a family of psychoactive substances that act on the central nervous system comprised of the brain and spinal cord. They are effective painkillers, but also produce a rush of euphoria that can encourage further use of these drugs. Our bodies create their own natural painkillers called endorphins. These proteins are released in response to stress and pain to help minimize discomfort. Both endorphins and opioid drugs bind to opioid receptor proteins located on neurons. These receptors act as docking stations for endorphins. When the endorphins attach, they inhibit the neuron making it less likely to fire or signal to other neighboring cells. In this way, endorphins have a calming or soothing effect. Opioid drugs like morphine and heroin have a very similar chemical structure to our body's endorphins and mimic their inhibitory action on neurons. These drugs act on several areas to produce different effects. For example, opioids silence the signals that travel from the spinal cord to brain areas that make us aware of the pain. In addition, opioids bind to receptors in the limbic system the region of our brain responsible for regulating our emotions. This can relieve psychological pain associated with feelings like loneliness, anxiety, and inadequacy. Finally, opioids bind to inhibitory neurons in the ventral tegmental area, or VTA, which is the part of our brain that is associated with reward. Under normal circumstances, the VTA releases dopamine when we engage in activities that are pleasurable. These dopamine neurons are otherwise held silent by inhibitory neurons. Opioids bind to receptors on these inhibitory neurons, causing the break to be removed from our dopamine-producing neurons. This causes dopamine to be released, which explains the rush of euphoria experienced when taking opioid drugs. In more recent years, people have made small changes to the chemical structure of existing opioids to create highly potent substances like fentanyl and carfentanil. Higher potency means smaller amounts of the drug create an intense effect. They are also shorter lasting, creating increased withdrawal and cravings. But what if you don't know what you're taking? At very high doses, opioids cause sedation. The neurons responsible for controlling our breathing become impaired, and the result is an overdose from respiratory failure. Now that more potent drugs exist, it is important to reduce the harm associated with using opioids. Avoid using alone if possible. When this is not possible, consider calling a friend in advance so that someone is aware you might be at risk. Carry a naloxone kit, which can temporarily reverse an overdose. People with opioid use disorders often understand the risk of using alone, but fear the stigma surrounding their substance use. People who are stigmatized by substance use feel like they would rather risk their life than face the negative attitudes of others. 
They remember the judgment, discrimination, and labels used to describe people who use drugs. I just wish they knew that their words mattered. I hope he gets the care he needs. Paramedics do great work. I'm sure he will get better. Living well is possible. Choosing the words we use to talk about people who use drugs is the first step to ending the stigma. You never know who's listening. A community that uses compassionate words over negative ones creates a place where people can speak up and get the care they need. There is no one-size-fits-all solution to living a healthy life. Everyone's pathway to wellness looks different but the foundation of each one is support and empathy from others. We support all people and all pathways. What would you do next if there was hope? What if the one thing you were wrong about was not having a good life? <laughs>